uh, just got a new transition sentinel it is the 2022 gx build this is my first new bike in a while i'm coming off a diamondback release which is they call it a short travel bike but i mean it's just a trail bike with 150 130. this is 160 150. i'll list some geometry numbers like right here but it's definitely different from what i'm coming from and a lot of the reviews were saying that uh a lot of the reviews were saying that it's not the greatest technical climber and you know not amazing around tight corners just because of you know how slack it is but i'm going to try that out today and see if it's true um, I think we all know this bike's really good on steep stuff and you know that sort of thing but I want to test it on you know something that's kind of out of its element Red Mountain today about to take some of my favorite trails this one's uh trail number five which is the Ike Mastin trail a really fun one pretty tech it's got some it's got a tech descent coming up but then it has a tech climb and then I'm also gonna do trail number 16 since that's what everyone voted on my Instagram for me to hit on the new bike so um yeah, we'll see how it goes there is a slight creak in the bike uh, i need to dive in and figure out where that's coming from i think it's just really dry and just need to grease up everything but um overall i'm pretty impressed so far but let's get it all right guys let's hit trail number five i actually took my bike over to shane rides mtb's place and uh i think we got it pretty dialed on the suspension and bottom bracket needed some grease trying to avoid some of the side brush because I got a tick on me recently So much crazy it's so crazy how this thing just wants to plow like you literally just point and aim it and it'll go boom and now we'll cut into the technical climb the technical climb portion of trail number five the Ike Mastin Trail. Boom. I did that one pretty easy. You might be able to hear that little click. What's weird is it only comes from pedaling. But we greased up the bottom bracket and the pedals and that still didn't fix it so i have no idea what it is overall i'm not sweating it but whatever <laughs> bunny hop's pretty good plows right through all of the, those roots and what's crazy for this being a uh, a long travel bike it's still pretty agile and maneuverable You can definitely feel the length of the bike in some scenarios, but oh shit. Oh, this is a really hard climb. I've never gotten out of the Diamondback. Hell yeah. Okay, 
Oh my god. Let's pause right here. So far, I'm pretty impressed with this thing's climbing ability. I cleared some spots that always give me trouble on the Diamondback. And for scientific purposes, that could be a number of things. Could be that since I do practice it on the Diamondback, that on this bike, I was already ready. Or it could be this is a 29er and I have a 27.5. It could be so many different things. Last Red Mountain video is this right turn. I just go down this road and then I eventually come to a right turn. And that is how I get back up to trail number 16. You can do the little rocky climb by the container, but that's always what I started off with. And one thing about me is I do not like to hit the same climb twice. This bike pedals and climbs surprisingly well. Doesn't feel like a slug. There's not much pedal bob. So, I mean, overall, it's very nice for that. 15, arguably the techiest climb in the park. I think everybody that comes out here somewhat struggles with this one. Hopefully today, that is not me. One thing I noticed about this bike is I have a tendency to want to get over the front wheel on my other bike. And with this bike, I'm not really having to do that on the climbs. Every time I'm trying to get over the front wheel on this bike, the back loses traction. So I'm gonna be a little more aware of that first climb right here. That's a little warm up for what's to come. Another steep one. A lot of roots through here. All right, this one I gotta stay pretty wide on. I gotta go in and wide. There we go. Whew. Oh man, I didn't think this trail was gonna be this overgrown. Not nah, ticks. Probably the hardest climb. Super steep. Damn. <laughs> Didn't get it, but I mean, it's whatever. New bike. Probably need to be in a higher gear just so I can actually get some power and pedal through it. Oh, this one's pretty hard. Yes. Well, that was easy. Man. This trail looks like Tick Central. Wasn't really want to go through a trail with a lot of brush on it. Bro, those stairs are so smooth on this thing. That is funny. Man, 
man, 29er just eats up those little punchy ones. That's sweet. This one's really fun. Let's get it. Man, I'm not good at steep corners on this bike yet. Just gonna let it wide open right here. Yeet. That one's fun. Guys, I took it to Red Mountain and hit some chunk and some chatter. Now it is time to see how it rides over some XC flow. Let's freaking get it. Still getting used to turning on this thing just because it is super long. jump so easily. That's the craziest part. That was pretty sick. All right guys, so this is the last part of the Transition Sentinel review. Um, I've reviewed it at Ride Birmingham and hit some jumps with it, which fantastic for. And then I rode it at Red Mountain, rode some chunk, rode some tech gear stuff. 
Um, I'd say like Tech C is what I would call it. Um, then road Johnson's, which is flow, small little bump jump type stuff. Um, now I'm gonna ride on some of my favorite trails, which are gonna be Fire Pits, Blood Rock, Hyde, maybe West Ridge. I might be able to squeeze West Ridge in today, um, but then I'll be able to give you my final opinion on the bike. So can't wait. Hey, if you can't get over this log, you gotta learn how to get over it. That's what makes the trail hard. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. Wow. So I handled that pretty well. Man, it is muddy through here. Huh. That felt good. Blood Rock is pretty good on this bike, not gonna lie. I kinda like that. Um, could I go faster? Yes, most definitely. I think I could. Will I do that today in this review? No. <laughs> but, yeah, like I was saying, I mean, I, I haven't been too hyped to get out and ride this bike over rocks. I don't know if I mentioned it in any parts of the video, but the first two days I got this bike, dude, I was falling left and right. Like, I don't know if it was because the bike's so slack or what, but that just, my body position was trash. But I think if I do a blood rock a couple more times on it, I'll be destroying my PRs because I kind of just plowed right through this. But uh, let's check out Hyde and we'll go from there. I mean, some of these sections are kind of hard on this bike, but overall it's not bad. So a couple sections, some little punchy climbs. This thing just breezes right through. That's kind of cool. All right, guys, here's the part. But I feel like it might be kind of hard. No, oh, yes, dude. I did not get off like all my life. <laughs> that was funny. What's crazy is I can track stand so much better on this bike. One part of Hyde is coming up. Whew. Basically, this is where the downhill starts. Gotta be really conscious of your pedals on this trail. It was overcast when I got here and now it's kind of sunny out. It's kind of cool, but it doesn't look good for videos.
Oh, I normally take a left. Oh. oh man, that was awkward. I'm gonna pause right here. Time to go down this portion of hide. Few more pedal scrapes than I normally would get, but on I normally go over that rock. Okay, that was different, but not bad. Not bad at all. So some of the pros of the Transition Sentinel is number one, it's a 29 here. I'm coming from a 27.5, so rolling over stuff is a little easier. Um, another pro is that it's long, so it's easier to balance in track stand. A con is that it's long. So I have to be a little more mentally aware of where I'm at over the bike and on the actual trail itself. Um, <clears throat> and, and that just makes moving through rocks and stuff a little harder for now. Once I get used to the bike and become one with it, then, you know, everything will be fine. Um, let's see what else. Suspension's good. I like that. It's pretty dialed. I mean, yeah, there's really only that one negative I have to say is that it's just it's so long and slack that like, I have to be a little more conscious of body position and like, you know, where I'm out on the trail, but overall it's pretty awesome for faster lines, like, you know, like flow trails and that sort of thing. I've been liking this bike for tech. I'm getting used to it. Um, one con would be the bike doesn't, it's not really, it's not a bad looking bike at all by any means. I mean, it looks pretty good, but it's not flashy. Like there's nothing that stands out about it. So. I am going to change something up a little bit. Maybe get some different colored spokes or something. I don't know. But overall, I'm pretty satisfied with it. I'm actually going to try to go up this rock right behind it and go down right back there. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to, you know, send this trail on some, or <laughs> send this trail, send this bike off some bigger drops and, you know, go on more trails. But for now, I'm pretty happy, you know. All right, let's get it. That felt great. <laughs> that felt great. So that was nice.
<laughs> this little road gap thing. Guys, in the sum up of this video, I guess what you're all wondering is, should you buy a Transition Sentinel? And if you are a casual rider, no. <laughs> if you are someone who's looking to send it off the of jumps, um, you want to hit some drops, you want to plow through some roots and some chatter, um, and you just want to point and shoot, yeah, this is a great bike. If this is your first, if you're looking to buy your first bike, I'm sorry, but this ain't the one for you. <laughs> it's going to be too extreme on both the geometry, suspension, all that. Like, if I want to go to ride Birmingham, send it, go through some chatter, and just like not be worried about casing stuff and all that, then this bike is definitely a great option. I still have yet to take it on my two favorite trails, which are Boulder Ridge and West Ridge, but I took it on Hyde and uh, Blood Rock, which are contenders for my favorite trail. And those trails, it did great. Zero complaints. I even fit it through arguably one of the, the hardest turns in the park on uh, Hyde in between those two trees. So, it's nice. I like having this bike. But once again, if you're asking me, should you buy this bike? For 85% of people looking to buy a bike, I'd say no. For the other 15% that are looking to send it, who have some experience already, I'm gonna say yes. And yeah, so that's my uh, first review of this bike. I've had it for about two weeks now, taking on about six or seven rides. And you know, took me a little getting used to, but overall I'm pretty satisfied. And as far as like the whole color thing, I mean, I knew what I was buying when I bought it. I could see the color and you know, I like having a bit more of a, uh, a loud, vibrant bike that kind of stands out. There was like a electric blue Sentinel that was also for sale, but it was further away and the back wheel was cracked and was just gonna cost more in the long run. And, and it was the same exact price as this one. So, yeah. I don't know, hopefully this review helps with making your decision on a Sentinel. Um, yeah. Am I gonna sell my Diamondback? Definitely not.